in order to be a good hash function, it has to produce what looks like a uniform distribution of random numbers. If there's any non-uniformity in the hash function's output, the performance of this starts to degrade dramatically. I have to smooth things out. (coughs) (coughs) That means there is no ordering of keys. Keys are not ordered. I write them down in a particular order. Any permutation of those four lines is exactly the same dictionary. (coughs) Excuse me. When I loop over it, I get them in an arbitrary order. There is no order. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me a second. I'll give the rest of today's talk in American Sign Language. <coughs> and, and then we'll do charades, right? Three words. Sounds like a play. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Let me What's going on here? Well, you give me some data, like a string, and I will produce a number. If it's a good hash function, you will believe that that is producing numbers that are uniformly distributed all across the range of what I can represent in 32 bits. If you can see any deviation from a uniform distribution of that hash function, it's a bad hash function. Because any non-uniformity will lead to hot spots. More items will be going here than over there. Performance drops. People have tuned these. They've worked really hard to make these good and fast. And unfortunately, there's a trade-off. It can be good, but not fast. Or it can be fast, but not good. So don't write this yourself. Serious. You probably cannot beat the ones that are built into Java and Python and Ruby. I mean, entire theses have been written on good hash functions. One of the reasons for this is that hash functions are also used in cryptography. And there it's really, really important that their output look uniform. Because if any signal survives into the output, it's a way to attack the code. One way to break simple ciphers is to say, well, the letter J is appearing really frequently in the output. J is probably how they represent the letter E because the letter E is the most common letter in English. So simple substitution and permutation ciphers, trivial to break. You just look at the distribution of letters in the output, look at the distribution of letters in your language, match them up and you're done. More sophisticated ciphers are mostly about erasing any signal to make the output look as much like random noise as possible. It turns out that's the same property you want in a hash function. So yeah, really smart mathematicians have spent a lot of time looking at this because you know nuclear security and the entire banking system these days depend on good hash functions. And no, I'm not exaggerating. Well, OK, a little bit. Okay. So I can hash the number one. I can hash a string. When I try to hash a list, it blows up. Why? Because a list can be changed in place. One of the properties you want from a hash function is that once you've calculated it, its value never changes for the thing. Once I've calculated the hash function for Moira, Moira's hash value is always 173. Okay. Well, if Moira can change, in particular, since I can overwrite some or all of the elements in the list, 
its hash value could change. That's a bad thing. So you're not allowed to hash data structures like lists that can be changed in place. Strings cannot be modified in place. I cannot overwrite the H in hello and say name equals hello. Name of zero is now M for mellow. It says no. Once you've created a string in Python, that's its value. You can't change the value of the integer 3. The value of the integer 3 is 3. You cannot change a string in Python after you've created it. You can create new ones. We do that all the time. But you cannot modify a string in place. A whole bunch of reasons to do with performance optimization. Lists can be modified in place. We've been doing that. We've been appending values, overwriting values. Okay? If you can change it in place, it is not safe to calculate a hash function, a hash code rather, because as soon as you modify the structure, the hash code you calculated a microsecond ago is wrong, and Python has no way to automatically update it. It can't say, oh, wait a second, you calculated my hash code and you stored it in that variable, then you modified me. I'd better go over to that variable and change its value. It doesn't work. So in Python, in Python, we've got lists, which we write with square brackets, <coughs> and tuples that we write with parentheses. A tuple is just a list that can't be changed after it's created. As a constant list. Once you've created it, you can read its values, but you can't modify them, you can't extend it. That's what it is. Which means it is safe to calculate its hash code. Because once it's been calculated, it stays the same forever. Okay. Think of hash codes as being like, uh, in Canada they're called social insurance numbers. I don't know what they're called here. The number that you use for health services, tax payments... National insurance number. Okay. Once you've got one, it's yours for life. 